Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm so, so super excited you're here tonight. So tonight we are talking all about our morning routine, um, what that looks like, how to set it up, and just some ideas for you and um, the morning mess. But first, what I want you to do is go ahead and pop in the comments. Maybe just real quick, if it's four things, just type in what your morning routine is, what, what, um, what it is in your classroom. Um, and maybe type in hello, where you're from, just so we can kind of get to know everybody. Um, <laughs> my morning routine, I feel like it's kind of like, it's the way you start off your day. And it can either make or break your day, right? Like if everybody comes in crabby and unhappy, you're like, oh no, like this is not how I want to start my day. So on those days when everybody comes in crabby or tired or, you know, maybe somebody had a, had a rough morning at home for whatever reason, um, if your morning routine is the same each and every day, those kiddos will know, even if they're a little stressed, they'll know what to do. Um, and they'll start learning right when they walk, walk in the door. It's just so, so important. And the first day of school, we literally practice our morning routine during circle. I literally have the kids take their backpacks and they, we, um, I have another teacher here with me on this day. Um, um, we literally all go outside the classroom or door and they practice it. So what we, what that would look like, well actually, let me back up just one second. So during circle, the first day, I go over our arrival routine with this, with visuals. And this is um, in my Teachers Pay Teacher story. So our arrival routine is put your things away, answer the question, sign in, and then pick a table activity. So this is the same every single day, whether it's the first day of school or the last day of school or the day after Christmas break. Even if it's a crazy day, even if it's the day after a holiday or if it's a party day, it is the same every single day. Because kids need consistency. They like to know what comes next. I know I like to know. As me as a person, I thrive on routine. Um, so we want to do this for our kids too. So don't slack on your morning routine just because it's a crazy day or it's a party day or something. Like just do it every single day. Just so you get off on the right foot and you get those kiddos get learning the second you walk in the door. Um, but the first day of school during circle, um, we go over our morning routine and then I model it. So I'll pretend to be a kid and the kiddos will all sit at the circle time um, on the rug and I'll put on um, a backpack and I'll, I'll walk out the door. And that, like I said, I have another teacher here with me on this day, so don't think I'm leaving my class or anything. Um, I'll, I'll walk out the door and then I'll come in and I'll model each step just as if I were a preschooler. Um, or a pre-K kiddo coming in and doing all the steps and I talk through it all. So I think out loud. So I'm like, okay, I just got to school. I, first thing I need to do is put my stuff away. And then I walk over to my cubby and as I'm walking to my cubby, I'm like, okay, I need to take off my backpack and put it on the hook. Like I totally break it down. I think out loud everything I'm doing. That way, even if maybe they aren't picking up on it visually, if they hear it and they see it, Hopefully they'll, um, it's just more senses going, right? They see it and they hear it. Hopefully they'll, um, they'll learn it easier. So, and then after I model it, all the kiddos put on their backpacks or if, if um, when I had full day, they grab their lunch boxes out of the fridge and they, we literally walk out the door. And like I said, if you do this, make sure you have another teacher here. So that way you have a teacher outside your door in the hallway and you have a teacher inside you. Obviously, you never wanna leave those kiddos unattended. If you are a teacher all alone, just have everybody sit by your door and but still be in your classroom and you can totally still do this. Um, and tell them, say, okay, we're gonna practice the morning routine. Let's get our backpacks, grab your lunch boxes, and um, go sit or walk out the door. And then like three or four at a time. And I have kiddos who come back, about half of my class comes back because they loop with me. So they're there that preschool year and that pre-K year. So I have a multi-age classroom, so they're all together. So I try and pick a kiddo who was here the year before if I have, and put them with a couple three-year-olds or maybe somebody who wasn't here last year who kind of remembers hopefully the routine from last year, fingers crossed, right? Um, and that way they can be a model too as they're going through the steps. And I carry this with me. so. I'll tell the kiddos, hi, good morning, I'm so glad you're here. And I'll, I'll point and I'll say, okay, remember, the first thing you need to do is put your things away. And they'll walk over there and put their things away. And they answer the question. We put all the question stars back for this activity. And then they sign in again. And, and then I'll have the table activities put out and they'll sit at the table and do a table activity. 
And it only takes like a minute, two minutes per group. So it's, they're not sitting there waiting any, any for like a long, long crazy time or anything. Um, <coughs> and if you, like when I had 18 kiddos and we sat outside the classroom, the other teacher, um, had, a, she was just reading a book to the kiddos who were waiting. But this year, um, I teach half day now and I have a smaller class. So, um, they just kind of hang out and kind of talk to each other and talk to the new teacher. Um, just kind of hang out because it probably only like the max they're waiting with a small class is five minutes. But when I had 18 kiddos, sometimes they, you know, after three, four groups go, they're out there waiting for about 10 minutes. So that way another teacher was outside there reading, reading them a book. So they were, um, you know, not just sitting out there bored and having, you know, which then leads to behaviors, right? So Annette asked, do I, do, do I serve a morning snack or breakfast? And I don't, but if you do, that one of those options is in this pack. So you, that would just be part of your morning routine. Like maybe it wouldn't be, you know, sit at the table for an activity. It would be sit down for breakfast and maybe you would have wash your hands in there too. Obviously if they're, you know, eating, they probably need to wash their hands first. So you'd have wash your hands and then um, breakfast or snack or whatever it is. So that way on the second day of school, since they all practiced it, I've, oh, and don't forget to give them giant praise after they're done. Like it's super, super exciting that they, they did the morning routine. And then that's our circle time. Like it's nothing exciting. It's practicing a routine because let me tell you what, the second day of school, when they come to school and they know the routine a little bit better because they practiced it the day before, um, their parents are like amazed. They're like, oh, she already knows what to do. Like, and they're excited because they know what to do and they know what's coming next because they like to show off to you and they want you to be proud of them. And the second day of school, the third day of school, however many days it takes, I carry this with me and I'm like, oh, remember this, put your things away and then answer the question. So, and then this is just a ribbon. A lot of people asking about this. So this is just a ribbon and it's usually, you can see, it's usually taped right next to my question, which I'll show you in just a minute. And they're on Velcro. So that way, if, a, if I need, if, if a kiddo wants to touch it, if they want to feel it, um, I can literally take it off and give it to them if they want that, if they want to hold it. You know, different ears, it's different for different kiddos. So that way, you can just pull it off and give it to them if they want to. Or maybe they want to pull it off. Maybe you have a kiddo who's, who struggles with the routine and maybe the other kids are okay. Maybe it's like day 10 or something. And maybe it, there's only one kiddo using this and they're pulling it off as they're going. And you know what? That's okay. Whatever you need that year for those kiddos, that's what you do, right? If there are three different times kiddos um, leave from your class, do you still do a dismissal routine? So I would, um, it would just be maybe at different parts of the day. Say, okay, um, in the dismissal routine, I have the same, I actually have it posted um, on the other side of my question of the day chart. And we don't practice that um, because it's literally do a table activity and as the parents pick up, unless I see, you know, everybody's like doing the table activity and then, you know how some, some years everybody like walks around and all the parents pick up rather than saying, you know, doing the table activity or, you know, whether there's a lot of people I know, um, do read, read a book on the carpet, um, as parents are picking up some years we have had to practice that, um, be like, okay, even though there's other parents here, remember we stay at the table until our mom or dads are here that way. We don't get lost in the classroom and it's really, you know, to, to help them, you know, interact with each other. And so you know where they are at all times, right? You don't want everybody wandering around the classroom. <laughs> at during dismissal because I don't want anybody accidentally sneaking out the door. This year it's not so bad with 10 kiddos, but um, when I did half day with 18 kiddos, dismissed, and we all dismissed at, at the same time, it was crazy. It stressed me out. <laughs> I was always afraid somebody was going to sneak out because I had my back turned <laughs> and I wouldn't know. Never happened, but it just stressed me out. And when I taught full day, um, our this was our arrival routine, and my kiddos came in between 7 and 8.30. <laughs> Big gap of time but they just slowly trickled in on morning and they still um, did the morning routine whether they came in at 702 or 831 they still did um, the morning routine and it's in my character red bundle so if you own my character red bundle you own this and there is um, a non rainbow <laughs> um, arrival routine header too in here too when new kiddos come into your class how do you get them to learn the routine? So sometimes it kind of depends on what that kiddo needs. Cause some years if they're a pre-K kiddo and they got it going on, they kind of pick up on it because they just watch and they kind of look for those models 
Um, some years, if, it, if you have a young three-year-old come in, or maybe you have a kiddo who come in who is just super nervous and super anxious, that happens too. Um, I just kind of make them my buddy and I just kind of guide them through the routine and I get out the visuals again. And if one day for a small group we need to practice the um, arrival routine again, then we do it. Because you know what? It's always a good reminder um, for the other kiddos too. Because I have three, four, and five year olds and um, oh, the signing in process I will show you in just a second. Um, it's always good for to have a reminder, like especially like bef um, if you have a fall break, sometimes that day after fall break, you can take to just re review routines. Um, maybe after Christmas break, you can take a day to review routines. Maybe your arrival time all of a sudden is a hot mess <laughs> and there's kids everywhere, they're forgetting what to do, um, and they're just kind of all over the place and it's just making a really rough start to your day. Scratch what you're doing for a small group and practice it because Maybe they just forgot. Maybe they just need more practice. Cause it's usually, they're not doing it at, usually they're not doing it to be mean. They're not doing it to be, they're not following the routine to be crazy. Usually they're doing it because they forgot the routine or they don't have enough self-regulation to follow the routine. So maybe they need more visual supports or something like that. So figure out kind of what they need and then do that. What are the things you put in the routine? Oh, you mean for table time? I'll talk about that in just a second. Advice for, pa for um, parents who are constantly unpacking their backpack for their child. So that's something I've kind of given up on. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, some parents, it makes them feel good <laughs> to unpack their kid's backpack. And it's kind of like their start to the day. So usually... I'll mention it during fall teacher conferences be like, hey, I really noticed that you always are unpacking their backpack. Hey, you know what? I really think they can do it independently. But some parents, it, it makes them nervous. It makes them scared. They're getting bigger. They don't like that sometimes. Or maybe they're going to kindergarten next year. So maybe they're, it's more of a parent issue than usually a child issue. Um, so just talk to them at fall conferences and then maybe slip it in your newsletter if you have maybe three or four families doing it. Um, Maybe um, talk to the child and be like, hey, I know your mom and dad helps me, helps you. Tell them that you want to do it by yourself and show mom in the morning or show dad or show grandma, whoever it is. Show them in the morning that you can do it by yourself. So sometimes maybe talk to that kiddo and then talk to him again at spring conferences. Um, but some parents, it just they just, they can't let go. And if it takes me all the way to spring, then it takes me all the way to spring to bring that kiddo to um, do it themselves. And that's okay. Um, sometimes it's really more the parent letting go. Kind of like the zipping of the coat or putting on their coat or carrying them in the classroom. Some things are just a comfort for the parent. And it makes them happy knowing that they got their kiddo off to on the right start and on the right track for the day. So it makes them feel good. It makes them feel good that their kiddo is happy when they drop them off because maybe they're afraid they're going to tantrum or maybe they're afraid they can't do it. Um, so just kind of give... just like sprinkle in some, um, just sprinkle in those um, reminders to the parent and you know, say, you know, I know she can do it, you know what, and if she needs a reminder, you're gonna be right there to help her or him. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I do. But sometimes I just give up because some parents, it's just not gonna happen. And then, you know what, it's okay. They're, they'll, they'll figure it out next year. <laughs> um, okay, sorry, I was reading a question. So that's their arrival routine. And that's kind of how we practice it um, on the first day of school. And on my blog, I forgot to tell you guys, and I forgot to put the link in the top. On my blog, um, which is www.pocketofpreschool.com, you can find the first, day of, the first 10 days of school lesson plans. And that is in there and how we practice all of our routines the first two weeks. I really don't teach much math. I don't do much literacy. I'm going to sprinkle it in. But it's mostly all routines that first 10 days. It is routines practicing, reminders, using visuals, that's all we do the first week. Because if you do it the first you know, couple weeks, then you'll spend less time doing it the, um, later because you'll have your, the classroom management down better. So now I'm gonna kind of walk you through my, um, the routine. So I'm gonna take the camera off the stand, I'm gonna kind of flip it around, and we're gonna kind of walk through it and I'll kind of show you. This is my door, and then to my classroom, and, like, and I'm an in-home preschool now. Um, so my kiddos come right here, and when they come in, and now you guys, my classroom is not perfect. It is not ready for the first day, so don't judge completely, because <laughs> um, it's summer. I'm just, we're, we're not there yet, but that's okay. So they come in the door, and 
and then they put their stuff away. So I'm trying not to make you guys dizzy. So they come in, they put their stuff in the door. And then I have cubby hooks over here. And then I have all of their cubbies um, right there. So all their backpacks and coats go over here. And then usually it's more of their projects and things like that um, go in there. Um, when I taught full day, I actually had a refrigerator um, that the stars were on. So this, since we don't do lunch, since I'm half day, um, they put their stuff away and they, since they're right by their cubbies and sometimes they put things in their cubbies, they grab their question of the week stars. And these are free in my TBT store if you want them. And then they are on Velcro. So there's a Velcro dot here and a Velcro dot here and then there's a magnet on the back. Because what a great visual reminder for them is when they put their coat away, if they turn, the next thing they kind of see is their star. So that's a visual reminder for them to that they need to do what next? They need to answer their question. So, because so cause my question of the week is all the way over there. Just That's just how it worked out. When I taught full day, um, they had to go across the room too. And when I taught full day, we did lunch. So I put my question of the week on my fridge. So that way they could put the question of the week away and then they could put their lunch in the fridge because they could bring their lunch if they wanted. And if you notice, right next to the question is the arrival routine. Um, so that way they answer the question. Whoops, dropped it. Are you wearing red? And each word is separate. That way they can touch each word. Are you wearing red? Yes or no. And this is just a metal, let me back it up. This is just a metal oil pan with tape on it. And so after they answer their question, if they need to, or if you need to give them a reminder, they, I can just point to the next thing and say, oh look, remember next you need to sign in. And then a trick for me, um, just it's just more of a management piece, to changing out the question. On the back of here, I have a magnet at the bottom the whole bag of question of the week. So that way it's right there for when I change it out. Um, and I did a whole video on question of the week. So if you wanna know about my question of the week like in lots of detail, you can click on the video and the link is at the top. And my question of the week packs are in my TBT store so you can grab those. And I have enough for the whole year. So everybody always asks me what order I do them in. So I do the are you wearing color words, like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, all those colors. I do the colors the first, however long <laughs> it takes. And I do one color a week. I know some kinder teachers, they like to change the question every day. But since I have three-year-olds, I like to keep the question the same. So we have the same color word all week. And then, so that maybe that one's this week. And then next week, it'll be, are you wearing orange? That way they'll get to know that pattern sentence and they'll get to know yes or no. And one fun thing to do, like in the spring, or maybe if you have a kinder teacher, if you're a kinder teacher, switch the yes and the no. That way, they have to read the sight words, um, and every morning too, they're not just it's not just automatic. Because you will see if you make if you do question of the day as part of your morning routine, it will become automatic. So that way, they're kind of reading more of um, more of the, more of the words on the thing. And the reason why I'm, the, everybody always asks, why do I do yes or no? And I actually tried a, a couple different times doing like, what, what rhymes with hat? Is it cat or like house? And once like three people answer the question, nobody even reads it. They just, it's just automatic and they put it up. Like it's like, they don't even read it. They're just like, oh, this is probably the answer. I'm just gonna stick it over there. So I always try and do yes or no questions that way they actually have to think about it and actually answer the question. So let me show you some of the other ones I do and um, let me, um, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. So after we do, are you wearing red? Oh, and I updated the color pack because I added the color variants on the, um, on the color words. That way you can talk about, you know, is it light red, is it dark red or things like that. And if they want to compare their clothes, they can pull it off and actually compare it like they could be like oh look it is red so I hope that helps so after that I do the clothing question like are you wearing buttons it's still are you wearing but now it's um are you wearing has to do with their clothes so buttons 
And that button is on the S, which is super cute. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. And there's like backpack, and then there's, you know, hat, gloves, there's boots, sandals, all kinds of different things in there. Numbers, letters, are you wearing a stripes, are you wearing spots? And then after that we do, um, do you have the letter A in your name, or do you have the letter B in your name? And the name ones they love. And for some kiddos, it is hard for them to answer no, but you'll work through that <laughs> if you have a kiddo, which you probably will, because every year I have somebody who does not like to answer no. <laughs> and then we'll do um, how many letters in their name. So do you have seven letters in your name? Do you have four letters in your name? And they have to count the letters in their name. So you're getting lots of literacy in when you're doing letters in my name, and whether they're counting the letters or they're doing, they're identifying the letters. And then we work on beginning sounds. Does your name with be, does your name begin with the same sound as apple, um, acorn? There's a whole bunch in there. And then I also have how do you feel questions. And then I also have which a lot of teachers like this one. Um, do you like? Obviously, I haven't printed this one yet. <laughs> um, we actually don't get to this one because um, I do one. I don't change it every week or every day. Sorry, but I will actually. Um, I do change the letters. Since I'm only three days a week, I do change the letters every day. Um, if you did purchase any of my question of the week packs, um, what you do is you get the, all the updates for free. Anything you purchase from my TPT store, you get the updates for free. And um, all you do is just go to your TPT, go to my purchases, and you can download it again. There's also a drop down that you can click. So um, you can click um, recently revised and it'll show you all the products you purchased off TPT that are revised and you can download them again for free. Um, and somebody was asking me about my playground rules. Those are in my TPT store as well. So the kids come up and do this on their own. So it's part of their morning routine. So since it's part of their morning routine, they do it independently. Well, almost, right? Sometimes the parents do the morning routine with them every day and that's okay. Um, but sometimes they say bye and they walk out the door and the kiddos do it independently. Um, and usually there's two or three kiddos answering the question at once. Um, so usually they kind of help each other and they're talking about that question or talking about like the letters in their name or the how much counting them, which is really fun or they're comparing how many yeses or how many noes there are. So there's lots of great literacy and math conversations for question, um, if they're at the question of the day chart. So they do it more independently. Um, when I change the pattern sentence, I will make sure I'm there or um, a teacher is there kind of helping and supporting that because they're like, whoa, it changed since it's the same for so long. So it kind of freaks them out. So if you do change the question, make sure you got somebody there for some support. The teacher binder is in my TBT store. All of my visuals for um, social emotional are in my TBT store and there's a link at the top. And there is a link at the top to the video I did on question of the day. And that's at the top too and that's lots and lots of detail on it. Okay, so we put our stuff away. That was the first thing. We answer the question of the day. And then the next thing they do is sign in. So I'm gonna walk over there and we're gonna sign in. Cause that's fun, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna flip it around and show you guys my table. So I set it up just as if I would set it up in the morning as if kiddos would come in. So they answer the question, which is right there, and then they walk over here and they sign in. Now, the first couple, couple days of school, I just have blank sign-in sheets out. And then I will randomly put blank sign-in sheets out too if I'm doing an assessment or I can I want to know what they can do independently. I'll just put blank ones out. Um, so there's just blank sign-ins out the first couple days. And then you can do um, markers. And if you have a lot of kiddos who are struggling with fine motor, you can do markers. That way they're not struggling with a pencil and they're having to sign in their name. Or um, I like to use little short pencils so sometimes you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. So I'll have my husband cut pencils with a saw. <laughs> like the fancy ones you get in the dollar spot. He'll cut them for me with a saw so I have short, cute pencils. Cause you'd be so surprised that the kiddos get so excited over these little fancy pencils. They get so excited. But if you use short pencils, it's easier for their little hands. There's a big debate in the preschool and kinder world. Like what's best? Thick pencils, thin pencils markers, crayons, so markers would be the easiest to use because they don't have to apply pressure. So if you have a lot of kids struggling with fine motor and you don't want them to struggle right when they get in um, for sign in, because signing in can be hard by itself <laughs> anyways. Um, so start with markers. 
which is what I usually do, and then move to pencils once everybody, you build that confidence and they know, they know you and they feel safe in the classroom and all of that. Then you can move to pencils, and even if it's hard or this like very light pressure and you can barely see it, it won't be a big deal. Um, Dana says she uses golf pencils. I know Ikea has short pencils. If you have an Ikea by you, um, grab a handful. I'm not, you know, just a couple like that, like the whole bin or anything. Um, and then, so, but I have been told by um, OTs that the fat pencils are actually harder. Because if you think about it, um, so th their hands are tiny, right? So this pencil is probably the same size as the palm of their hand. So, think about if, you, if you, you were given a pencil that was as long as your hand. Well, actually, if you're using a long pencil, probably longer than that. So, a pencil that's longer than your hand and probably, what, an inch around? So, one of those jumble pencils that you see that are like erasers or something. Think about their little hands trying to manipulate that. So, if you're using fat, and this is just my perspective, what I've been told from OTs and my, um, my research. So, if, if you're a fat, fat pencil kind of person, um, just take it with a grain of salt, right? We're always learning. It would be like you using a pencil that's like longer than your hand and probably like this big around. Like, that would be really hard to manipulate, right? So, just that's why I have been always been told to use thin pencils, crayons, broken crayons, um, golf pencils, any um, pipsqueak markers, those are great because they're short. And another reason why people use golf pencils is they can't, they don't have as much to fist. So if your kiddos are fisting, when they write, have that fisted grip, there won't be as much to fist. So they're kind of forced, especially if you use broken crayons, they're forced to hold it with their finger. Now it's gonna be really awkward at first, um, but that's okay. Um, it'll be awkward, but they'll just get used to it and it'll be all right. But just kind of slowly lead into that. Um, you're writing using pencils. I always start with um, markers. Just the beginning of the year is stressful enough for kiddos. I don't want them to be stressed out during the morning routine. And then when I do when I do switch to pencils, or maybe you switch to golf pencils, you can always put them in an envelope and pretend you got them in the mail and say, "Oh my goodness." <gasps> My friend is a kindergarten teacher. Look what she sent us in the mail. Oh my gosh, she sent us kindergarten pencils. And they get so excited. And it could be a golf pencil. It really isn't a kindergarten pencil, but they it just gets them excited about kindergarten pencils and um, signing in. <laughs> Whatever, you know, we just gotta, we gotta make it exciting, right? Okay, so I'm gonna flip it back around and kind of show you the first, um, first couple days when I don't know what level kiddos are at. They just have a blank sign-in sheet. And parents will sign in for them, but I just say, you know what, if, if they're scribbling, it's no big deal. If they're just doing this, and if they're scribbling on the whole page, then it's no big deal. Like, that's that's important, too. And we want parents to know that scribbles are important, especially those of us who teach three-year-olds, that those scribbles are important, and they're they're really meaningful for them. So we want to be like, oh my gosh, I really love that. Look at, look at your name. I love it. Because um, if they're confident, then they'll be more more excited about signing in. So after they sign in and I figure out their level, then I switch to leveled pages. So this is what it would look like. And let's just pretend all these names are different. So at the table, I would have a whole bunch of different sheets and everybody would have their name in a different spot. And I actually forgot to, and these are some I kept from this year. Um, so what I would, the first level I do is like, let's, this was actually from, gosh, a couple months in maybe. Um, I just, so like Austin would just have yellow A's. And Taryn would just have orange T's. And Chase would just have green C's. And Savvy would just have yeah, um, purple S's. And that way they come in and they find their name. And you know what? Let me... This, these were three-year-old, so they didn't know their name. And, um, I color code my classroom, so everything that had an A on it and was yellow was Austin. So he knew to come to the sign-in table and find the page with the yellow A on it. And then Taryn knew she had to come and find the sign-in table that had the orange T's, and she would trace the orange T's. Now, it does take them, um, you know, a little bit of, oh, look, hey, come on over here. Look, I see yellow A's. That must be Austin. And if you need to like put a star on it or put a shape or I know some people do those picture icons for each kiddo, you can put those right in here too. 
Um, these, this font is Miss Kindergarten. It's a free font on TPT. So you can download it and install it. I love this font. It's my favorite like kid print font because all the letters are like the right way. They're not like a crazy lowercase a or anything. Do you put their names with it? So their names are right here next to it. So I don't put name cards out or anything. Their names would just be right here next to it. So they're lowercase and then it would be like orange teeth to start out. And I do have a blog post all about signing in that shows you kind of the first level, which I totally forgot to keep last year. Um, and I'll pop that in. It's on my blog. I'll pop it in after it's over. So this was a couple months in and everybody, this, this group of kiddos got really good at writing just their first letter. So if you'll notice, he's only writing four of his letters. So I didn't go from writing just A's to writing his whole name. I switched to just four letters. That way, he's only having to write four letters. And if you guys have watched me on Facebook Live before, you know I talk about, a lot about motor memory and writing letters the correct way. And I don't make it stressful. <laughs> and in order to make it not stressful, we only work on a couple letters at a time. I don't, you know, if their name is, I don't know, Jacqueline, like me, <laughs> when I was little, I wouldn't put out that whole thing because I had nine different letters to write. And I, if I'm three, or if I'm four, or if I'm at kinder, maybe not kinder, but if I'm a three or a four year old who's never um, been exposed to letters before, I'm probably gonna not make them correctly. And every time I make them incorrectly, it's developing the incorrect motor memory. And motor memory is when your body just remembers how to do something. So it's kind of like when you go to yoga, and the first time you do a pose, it's hard, and each time it gets easier, it's because your muscles have motor memory. I love motor memory, so fun. Um, so yeah, so that's why I went from just one letter, they switched to just four letters in their name. And then once they get this down, then they trace all the letters in their name. And, the, and while we're doing this, well, we would also be doing, you know, name activities during small group, during table time, during all of those things, um, all, the, all the different parts of the day. So they'll, we'll be working on these letters too in other parts of the day. So we don't just work on names during sign in. And then, so after that, I actually remembered to keep this one. So here is what I put out maybe a couple months later, whenever they're ready. And this is just for this group of kiddos. So at the same time I had this sign-in sheet out, I also have, since I have pre-K kiddos too, because those are my, those are my little babies, my little three-year-olds. So I also had my pre-K kiddos. And if, when I had 18 kiddos, I probably had probably four or five sign-in sheets out and they would all, they would be covered on the table every day. Um, and if you're, if you don't get a lot of paper, put these in a dry erase pocket and that way they can write their name and you can just erase it and you don't have to um, have a whole bunch of paper copies, which I actually might switch to next year um, just to save paper. Um, but they, they could write their name independently. So I'm not going to have them trace because that's wasted, right? They can do that already. Like, why am I having them practice that? So I had them practice writing their name just in uppercase. And I work, we focus on uppercase the first half of the year, and then the second half of the year, we um, start working on those lowercase. Because like I said, I, we work, I, that motor memory, I really want them to be making those letters correctly. So I don't switch to lowercase until we have those uppercase letters down pat. And they're confident with those because it's also part of development, right? They, they make a straight line before they make all the curves and all those fancy, um, fancy different things. Um, so it's easier to make the, the capital letters. They see them more in the environment. They recognize them first. Um, you know, like Target, it's in all caps. All the environmental print, if you look around, most of that is all capital letters. So we focus on capital letters the first part of the year. And then the second part of the year, we switch to lowercase. Some, most of the time I pre get kiddos do just fine and they transition and it's not a big deal. So then they would um, transition to, it would, and I forgot to keep this. I need to keep some next year. Um, they would switch to, and it would be just their names. It would be in lowercase and they would probably be tracing their name first to make sure they're writing it the, um, all those letters the right way. After they got their first name down in lowercase, then I do first name, last name in lowercase. 
So that way, by the time they go to kindergarten, they're writing first name, last name, all in lowercase. So that way all my kindergarten teachers are happy and they're not mad at me that all these kiddos are coming to kindergarten writing in all uppercase. Cause I don't want, I don't want that either. Don't worry, kinder teachers, I am here for you too, I promise. But I also know that three-year-olds, capital letters are hard and I don't want my kiddos frustrated. So, and if you do lowercase, it's totally up to you. I'm just saying, this is what I do. This is my jam. Don't, don't get mad at me, <laughs> especially my kinder teachers out there. So first thing we did, they put their stuff away and then they grabbed their question off their cup, questions are off their cubby. They did the question of the day. They signed in. Oh, one more thing about sign in. Parents will not like you <laughs> if you have one sign in sheet for 18 kids. Not fun to wait in line when a kiddo takes 45 minutes, well, what it seems like to write their name. So have, if you have 18 kiddos and they all come in at once, have, you have seven, eight chairs at a table, have eight sign-in sheets and put the same ones out at the same place. That way they know which one usually is at their spot. Um, I had, when I had 18 kiddos, like I said, my kiddos came in between 7 and 8.30, so it was never a big deal. I did have um, four to five sign in, sign in and out sheets um, on the table at once. Cause I, and I also, um, so kiddos usually came at the same time, so if I knew two kiddos came at the same time, I would put them on different sign in sheets. So it wouldn't make, the parents wouldn't be standing there for hours waiting. How many kids do I have in my class? So in my full day, I taught full day, 12 years. And I had 18 kids up to 25 on my roster because they could pick what days they came to school. How much fun is that? We all know that would be crazy, right? It was crazy, but it was a lot, of, a lot, a lot of fun. So I had 18 kids up to 25 on my roster. Um, one year I did have 25. That was crazy. Um, and then this year for half day, next year I have nine kiddos. So the state max, I'm state licensed, so the state maxes me out at 10. I don't want to be at 10, so I'm only going to take nine. We put our stuff away, we did our question, we signed in, and now it's table time. So I'm going to flip the camera around to kind of show you I have it set up so you can kind of see what it would look like in the day, in the day of pre-K. They, oh, sorry guys. So they put their stuff away and they got their star. No, I'm trying not to make you guys dizzy. Um, they did their question of the day, and then they signed in, and then in the middle of my room, I have two tables, and one table, it would be all set up. Now, if you have more kiddos, you would want both tables set up right when they go. So yeah, Priscilla, I did use different sign-in sheets um, every day, um, but next year, I'm probably going to put them in dry erase pockets to save paper. Unless you want to, unless I keep them for an assessment that I'll put out a paper and then I can cut them up and pop, plop them in their portfolio. Okay, trays. Everybody loves trays, right? So these are from Discount School Supply. If you go to the top of this post, you can find them on Amazon as well. I want to say they come in a 10 pack and they are smaller than a sheet of paper. So a piece of paper will not fit on here, but they're perfect for all those little artsy things we do where they don't need a big giant tray. So this is how it, it would be set up, like if, if my kiddos came in. So uh, um, like for a birthday party theme, we um, I love doing Play-Doh with cookie cutters and these um, silicone cupcake holders and number candles just to add some, some math into my table time activity. The colored chairs are from Walmart and the tables are from Discount School Supply. So this is what it would look like. Long story short of all of that, <laughs> sorry. So this is what it would look like if they would come in. They would come in and then I usually have a bucket of Play-Doh in the middle and they would pick their color and they would pick a tray and they would sit down and play with the Play-Doh and play with the Play-Doh activities or whatever activity is on the table. And then I usually do, um, sometimes I do two table activities and sometimes I have two different activities set up. So that table I'm gonna show you in a minute but maybe I would have like something, like maybe I'd have like a STEM activity on here and maybe I would have Play-Doh on here. Maybe I have Play-Doh with number candles on here. Maybe I have Play-Doh with stick candles on there. So it just really all depends what you wanna do. So it would just be all set up right there. So some other fun table time activities that um, I like to do are stews. So if I had stews out, I would have maybe the stew out at one table and then the other table would be a different activity. So um, for, so for table time, how does that kind of work? So like the management piece, I guess people are asking about. So 
my since since everybody's coming in I need it to be more of an independent activity so this is my table time activities are always something my kiddos can do without any help um, so it's something they can do completely independent so I have a lot of times math manipulatives out like maybe I just have chains out on the table and I just dump out the whole bin and I spread it out in the middle of the table um, maybe I have a game we played two days ago maybe I'll put that out and that way I know they can play it independently and they don't need me for help so all the table time table time activities I do everything should be something they can do independently because if I need to talk to a mom or a dad or a grandma or grandpa or whoever dropped off if they need to talk to me for a couple minutes that I need for my kiddos to be able to have um, I need my kiddos to be able to do this independently so mom can tell me that the dog died last night so Billy might be having you know a rough day or something like that or it might be talking about death you know you know all those fun little things that not fun not, not that a dog dying is fun sorry no <laughs> that's not what I meant um all those little things that happen in their life at home that totally impact their day at school that we need to know about. So I always make sure the table time activity is something they can do completely independent. That way, if if I need to talk to mom or dad or maybe somebody pees on the floor, like I'm preschool, it happens. <laughs> um, maybe somebody throws up. Maybe somebody spills water all over the floor. Maybe, I don't know, you know, crazy things happen. <laughs> I need to be able to help that situation um and so yeah so i do um somebody asked if i have an assistant so i have an assistant miss jenny um two days a week and i am three days a week so one of the days at least i am by myself with um my kiddos so that's why i max out at 10. <clears throat> and somebody said they can't find my routine chart it's actually called on tbt arrival and dismissal chart so check that out i think i you might have been putting in the wrong words so i call it an arrival and dismissal routine chart on tbt Huh. Brianna says her kids throw Play-Doh everywhere. Well, do a small group on how to play with Play-Doh and or don't put out tools. Say, you know what? We're going to practice playing with Play-Doh appropriately. And when you guys show me you can do that, I will put out fun stuff we can use it, that we can use with it. And maybe like, oh, look at these look at these candles I got from the dollar store oh I hope we can play with play-doh appropriately so or I hope we can keep all the play-doh on the table today um so that way um that way we'll do really cool things tomorrow so try that um so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you a couple more things that are fun for table time so give me one second so I put out, these are my counting shoes, and once kiddos play a couple of them, they kind of have it down pat. So if maybe I had Play-Doh at this table, maybe at the end of this table, I would have out um, the birthday stew, and they would just do the stew game. So any game that you have played um, with your kiddos and you know they can do independently, or kind of independently, and you don't mind if they, you know, kind of make up their own rules to it, then put it out for table time. Um, a lot of fun, fine motor activities with tweezers. Um, so um, I have a whole bunch of different kinds. So maybe it might be like, I don't know. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But any kind of like, oh, maybe like pom-poms and, um, and like those ice cube trays, maybe in some tweezers. So put those out for table time. And I always... You can see how I kind of just put it out in the middle. My table time activity is always spread out in the middle to kind of make it look more inviting. It never looks Pinterest perfect. I see other people that have these amazing setups with the, like flowers and whatever it is. Um, I don't, my invitation to play table time activities looks like this. It's not Pinterest perfect at all, but that's okay because it's, it's a classroom, right? Um, sand and writing trays are fun once you introduce them and I just, put one out at each at each table and put some letter cards in the middle and they can make their letters. They love that. Obviously, you want to make sure you teach how to use the materials that are out for table time before you put them out. Don't put something out for table time that you have never introduced to your kiddos because <laughs> they could throw it <laughs> just out of excitement. <laughs> uh, maybe they're like, um, like if you put out these sand trays and they've never had them before, they're going to go like this <laughs> and like sprinkle it everywhere. They're not going to know like automatically that they're supposed to write or draw in the trays or how to erase or any of that. So anything you put out for table time, make sure you've already introduced it at least once during, um, 
during small group or during centers or during circle or something. Okay, so another thing I like to put out are things from my center pack. So this is my school themed center pack. So I have like these Play-Doh cards and if you go to my TBT store and just um, search school centers, you can find these. But these would be fun to put out. So you could just put these out and just put out one on each, on each name and then put extra ones in the middle. Oh, and you could do um, any kind of letter work like that. Any of the name activities we've been talking about on Facebook Live for the past couple of weeks are always super, super fun. Um, you could put out just, um, I like to put out words in the middle and just some paper. And I just put one piece of paper in every chair and then they can write the words and just put out some markers and just different supply buckets in the middle of the table. Maybe, where's my button game? So this is just um, a button game you can play. So put out buttons and dice. So put out one card at each table or at each chair and then the dice in the middle. Or if you want to differentiate, um, put these out and then you just have the bucket of dice walk, walking around with it. And then they have to get the dice from you. That way they get the right one and um, they, they can play the game. Um, it's, okay, so I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to show you one of my tricks to making table time easy to get out and put away. So at the top of my cubbies, and sorry it's a little blurry again guys, I think. Um, at the top of my cubbies, this is kind of all of my go-tos. So I have in here, I have chalkboards and there's chalk in here, just in those little cups from the dollar spot. And then these are just like um, cookie trays from the dollar store. I have buckets with markers and marker boards. I have my dry erase boards and I have letter stamps. And then I have kind of right here in these two cubbies, I have lots, oh, I can't turn it, sorry. I have lots of math manipulatives in here that we use a lot for table time and small group. Um, these I just got, how fun are these? They're like little stackable counters. You can use them for graphing or counting. Um, here's some, you know, magnet numbers. And then in the group, there are these just basic 10 frame maps that are really, or these are 20 frames, sorry. I have 10 frames too. <laughs> 10 frame maps. So, um, those are really fun to use. I have a lot, like I have a big bucket of just fun mini erasers. Um, and letter cards. These are free in the Pocket of, Peace, Pocket of Preschool Facebook group. They're just the mini eraser um, pack. It's free just for the group people. You guys, because you guys know I love you. Like, and I have, y'all know I love, whoops, like, can you see them? Sorry. These like letter um, beads, and I have the pipe cleaners and the string on the top. Um, I have their name mats right over here. I have extra white name mats. So maybe I want to do a name activity. So I keep a lot of that stuff. Oh, and in, in here, I know some people um, like to use these for their, for their writing trays. I keep kinetic sand in here because you can use letter stamps with them. Um, they can build like with um, popsicle sticks in them. They're just, it's just really a fun way to keep um, this kinetic sand and it doesn't get all over the floor as bad. Um, so yeah, so these are just pencil boxes I got. I literally got these from Walmart because a couple of mine had broke. And then I just keep enough for one table in here. But that way I can literally, nine out of 10 times, a lot of the, the manipulatives I use, I use from right in here. And I can just plop it back up on the shelf. And I don't, it's not like anything big I have to um, put away. And table time, a lot of people think it has to be this big, crazy, exciting thing. And it doesn't. Like if you're, a lot of my table time is related to my theme. So if we're doing a campsite for pretend, maybe they're, you know, coloring all the stars. Maybe they're painting all the stars yellow. Maybe we're doing a pumpkin patch and we need a tractor or a hay bale. So they're painting a box. Like, cover your table with a um, like I, I just use an old white sheet that I cut in half and then I put the box on top and just put cups of paint out and they can paint the box um, so you can make pretend props for um, table time you can do math and literacy games they've already played you can do name activities 
you can um, put out so you can literally pull stuff out that you already like maybe you have um, you've noticed that nobody's really playing with these letter popsicles put these letter popsicles out for table time because maybe they just forgot you had them put those out put out some letter locks put out you know letter those letter robots from Lakeshore um, put out put out some letter stews and just put them out on the table and maybe two kids can do one. Two kids can share a board in a pot. You can also just put out math manipulatives. Like these are just translucent um, shapes. So you can just put those out. And you can just put out chains. Just put out, I just got these. How fun are these? These are like brain, what are these called? Brain flakes, I think. So brain flakes for STEM. Just put out some counters. So any math manipulative, just put those out of the table and let them explore. Because a lot of preschool is exploring all the different map manipulatives. Because there's so much you can do with, with chains. Just if you just put them out and give them time to explore. Um, put out, if you're, you know, learning about how to use magnifying glasses, just put out a magnifying glass at each, um, each chair and put out some seashells in the middle or put out some rocks in the middle. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can also um, put out seashells in the middle and magnifying glass or whatever nature thing you're doing at the time um, and just put out a little clipboard at each spot and they can draw their discoveries or draw what they see, draw their observations. Another fun thing to do for table time is STEM. Um, these are my STEM bins. And when I start the year, I bet only three of them are full um, or two, probably three or four. It just really depends on how many three-year-olds I have. So I love these. These are drawers are from Michael's because you can literally take this out and you could put it on that table over there. And they can just build with the popsicle sticks and maybe just throw out a couple of STEM challenges on the table. Like it can be that simple. Like this can be one of your tables and maybe on the other table you put out pattern blocks. Like it can be that simple. Like table time doesn't have to be this elaborate thing. Just think about what you don't have time to do or what manipulatives you don't have time to explore during your day. During your um, during your day or maybe some, what are they not playing with and they or maybe they need more practice with or what some some fun fine motor things It doesn't have to be crazy it just has to be fun and engaging like that's really all table time has to be morning message really quick This is my carpet area. Oops. I I still I, I ran on a duct tape normally I have a rainbow up here, but this is my circle area each kiddo gets to pick a spot to sit in um, just kind of helps them with personal space. It gives them a visual boundary. And then I sit in my chair and then we, we, they actually, we actually write together when we do message of the day. Um, so I, what I usually do is I'll say a sentence first and then I write it like tonight is Facebook Live. Like let's say our my message is that and I would make one line for each word. Tonight is Facebook Live live whoops and put a period and then you can check it i know some teachers do dots instead tonight is sorry my dots facebook live these are kind of placeholders for your words so okay so normally sorry trying to do this and at the same time so you would write a long long line for long words short line for short words so, and then I would go back and fill it in. Tonight is Facebook Live. And maybe, maybe I would ask the kids. And I, it, each time I do the message, I work on a different skill. So I might be like, live. What do you think live starts with? And they would be like, L. And I would write, okay, an L goes line down. And then live. Maybe you want to work on ending sound. Um, and I know some, that's just how I do it. I know some teachers um, write the message and then maybe they'll give the marker to a kiddo and say, oh, the word is, that's one of our sight words. It's like, Bobby, come up and will you write the word is? And maybe Bobby comes up and writes the word is. And then 
you, the teacher finishes the rest, so that's called sharing the pen. So you can share the pen um, during the message of the day. You can also write it and maybe circle words we know, like that's is, or maybe if, if you have um, three-year-olds, you can be like, oh, look, F. Oh, Frank, look. Maybe you have a Frank in your class, I don't know. <laughs> look, look, I see an F. Are there any other any other letters we see that anybody else's name starts with? And you're like, oh, Bobby, oh, look, here's a B. You know, or you can trace it. So just writing the message, um, you can either um, write it, you can share the pen, have them help you. Um, I know some teachers also like to, after they're done, they put a dot under it and they let kiddos come back up and um, they have the kiddos help read it and you can use a pointer or um, their finger and they can be like, tonight is Facebook Live. And so they can come up and read it after it's done. Um, so my morning message, I just write with them and it's usually something that's either happening that day or something that has already happened um, or maybe something that's going on at the time. Like last night we had a storm because you guys know storms freak out kiddos and some, some of them get loud and crazy and it makes them nervous and that's what they're thinking about. So my message might be about a storm that day because that's, what that's what's on their mind. And we want my message, I want them to know that we can write about anything. It doesn't have to be the same thing. It doesn't have to start with the same word every time. Um, and it just, it shows them, it mo you one, you're modeling writing and you're modeling reading the words to them. You're modeling how to form the letters. Um, you're doing sight words. You're modeling and talking about long words, short words. You're doing beginning sounds. And I usually only focus on one or two literacy concepts for each message, because my message only takes like two, three minutes, max. Some teachers have their message already written on a piece of paper, and then, on like chart paper, and then they can go through, and they read it together, and they, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing over here like I can see, but they'll read it together, and maybe they'll point to the words, and they'll circle different letters, and things like that. So it's up to you, kind of how you want to do morning message, but I love morning message, because it, it, it's just another way to sneak in more literacy, and, I do it at the beginning of circle time. That way I know they're focused because <laughs> it's the beginning. Because we all know at the end, sometimes you lose them just because of attention spans and things like that. Um, but I always do it at the beginning of my first circle. And then at the end, after I'm done here, I will link my schedule to um, this Facebook Live so you guys can see it. So yeah, my morning message isn't that, ex it's nothing exciting, but it's a big, it can make a big impact on doing letters and sounds or teaching all those letters and sounds and all those concepts of concepts of print. Well, you guys have a fabulous night. Talk to you soon.